Hello and welcome to the Operations Research 2 course and the first topic that we're going to talk about in this course is dynamic programming. Specifically, we will start with deterministic dynamic programming. So dynamic programming is a technique that can be used to solve optimization problems. So it's um, it has the same purpose with linear programming that you've learned in Operations Research 1 course. Um, both linear programming and dynamic programming, they are both techniques to solve optimization problems. The difference is that the idea in dynamic programming is that um, it will break up a large problem into a series of smaller and tractable problems. Tractable means that you can trace the computation in a smaller part of the problem and then link it to the other part of the problem and keep linking it to the other parts until you get the actual or the optimal solution for the original large problem. So the idea is breaking up a large problem into smaller ones. Now you may think that if this has the same purpose with linear programming, solving optimization problems, then why do we need to learn dynamic programming? The answer is that um, some problems are easier to formulate and easier to solve by dynamic programming. So in this video, we are going to look at two examples to see uh, the idea behind uh, dynamic programming. Okay, so we are not going to solve this um, examples yet, but we are going to see how we may use this idea to solve optimization problems. The first game is called the match puzzle. Suppose there are 30 matches on a table. I begin by picking up one, two or three matches. Then it's my opponent's turn to pick up again either one, two, or three matches. We continue keeping doing this until the last match is picked up. The player who picks up the very last match is the loser. So the question is how can I, the first player, be sure of winning the game? So at the beginning of the game, there are 30 matches on the table and it's kind of difficult to, you know, to imagine what happens between the uh, my first turn and then my opponent's turn and then so on such that who will be the loser in the end. So 30 matches is just, you know, too much to imagine. So let's think about a much simpler situation. Suppose there is only one match left on the table and it's our opponent's turn. So our opponent has no other choice than picking up that very last match, right? Because it's his turn and then there is only one match on the table. So he has to pick that match. In this case, in this situation, our opponent will always lose right because there is only one match left and it's our opponent's turn now let's think about another situation which is a bit more complicated there are four matches left on the table in and it's our opponent's turn in this case our opponent will win because he or she can pick up three matches and leave just one match for us to pick up Right, so our opponent picks up three matches and this one match here, it is left for us to pick and we become the loser. So in this case, four matches left and it's our opponent's turn. In this case, our opponent will always win. In other case, we should not let this situation happen if we want to win, right? Now what about there are five matches left and it's our opponent's turn. So let's see. If our opponent picks up one match, then the next turn is our turn. We have four matches and then we can pick up three matches such that in the final turn, our opponent's turn, 
he or she will have one match left, and in this case, our opponent loses. Similarly, if there are five matches left and it's our opponent's turn, he or she picks up two matches. In the next turn, it's our turn, and then we can pick up two matches, such that finally our opponent will also lose again in this situation because we leave one match for he or she to pick up. Again, if there are five matches left on the table and now if my opponent decides to pick up three matches, what we can do is that um, so our opponent picks up three matches, uh, there are two matches for us in our turn, we pick up one match, and then the remaining is one match for our opponent. So you see that in the case that there are five matches on the table, whatever our opponents do, whether he or she picks up one matches, sorry, one match, two matches, or three matches, we can make sure that our opponent will always lose. In other words, we always win. So in the case that there are five matches left on the table, we can always um, be sure that we will win this game. So five matches left on the table is something that we um, is a situation that we would like to make sure that it happens, right? On the other hand, four matches on the table and it's our opponent's turn, it's a situation that we try to avoid because in that situation, we will always lose. So apparently, there is a pattern of number of matches that we should leave on the table for our opponent when it is his or her turn to play the game such that we can ensure that we be always become the winner. So we leave one match for our opponent, five matches, we have seen this before, and then the pattern says we must leave 9, 13, 17, 21, 25, and 29 matches on the table for our opponent. So because we start the game with 30 matches on the table and the first turn is our turn, it means that on the first turn we pick one match to ensure that we leave 29 matches for our opponent. Then in the next turn, we just um, need to make sure that we leave 25 matches for our opponent, 21, 17, 13, 9, 5, and finally 1. In this case, we always will become the winner. So we have not seen how we may solve this um, problem using dynamic programming, other than just some kind of uh, intuition and trial and error. But um, from this example, we get the basic idea, which uh, we are going to see on the next slide. So the basic idea from that example is that the problem becomes simpler when it is smaller, right? Um, like if you, there is only one match left on the table and it's your opponent's turn, then it's very simple. The opponent will become the loser, right? Or if there is only one match left and it's our turn, then we become the loser. It's very simple. The answer is super clear. So one match left on the table and suppose it's your opponent's turn is a simpler problem than if there are four matches, if there are five matches, and so on, so on, until there are 30 matches on the table. It's very um, confusing, right? 30 matches on the table and you need to imagine what you should do such that you always become the winner. Okay, so again, we have not solved this problem using dynamic programming, but we look at the idea uh, which says that a smaller problem is simpler to solve. So in other words, we try to see if this problem is so small such that it is very simple, how would the solution be? And then from there, we try to look at a little bit bigger problem, bigger problem, bigger problem, until it finally um, becomes the original problem that we would like to solve. So that's the basic idea of dynamic programming. 
smaller problem is simpler to solve. In the second example is that, let's say I have a 9 ounce cup and a 4 ounce cup, but then my mother has ordered me to bring home exactly 6 ounces of milk. How can I accomplish this goal? So here's the solution, and then actually in this case, we are working backwards. By working backward means that we start from the end, saying that, okay, my mother asked me to bring exactly six ounces of milk, and then my cups are four and nine, so probably the solution is I have six ounces of milk in the nine ounce cup, and then zero ounce milk in the four ounce cup. So starting from six here and zero there, I start working backwards. Okay, so from six zero, probably the previous step is six and four, and then so on until finally I get to the beginning of the problem in which I have zero ounce of milk in the nine ounce cup and also zero um, ounce of milk in the four ounce cup. So again, I have not shown how we may use dynamic programming to solve this problem. It's kind of like just, uh, you know, like guessing, trial and error, and then, you know, uh, thinking about, oh, I have six ounce and then zero ounce there. I can move the milk and so on. But the idea here that this example would like to show us is that um, we are going to work um, the problems in the dynamic programming starting from the end of the problem starting from the very end of what we would like to achieve and then uh, working our ways up until the beginning of the problem okay so why do we do this well sometimes it's easier if you just you know supposing or assuming that you have reached the end and then try to work backward from the end until you reach the beginning and then hey you got the solution okay so that is the idea from the second example so these two examples shows two basic ideas of dynamic programming first is that we break the large problem like 30 matches on the table to uh two smaller problems like there's only one match on the table two matches three matches and so on and then the second idea is that we're going to work backward, starting from the end, starting from what we would like to achieve, and then working backwards until we reach the beginning of the problem. So keep these two ideas on your mind, a smaller problem and then working from uh, the end to the beginning, that we're going to use these two ideas to um, formulate optimization problems into dynamic programming. And then we are going to use these two ideas as well to solve the problem, or in other words, to get the optimal solutions. So see you on the next video.